Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Struggling Hunters. Uh, you got me, Eric, Joe over there on the other side. Tonight's going to be a pretty good one, I think. Uh, we've been going all year, making content all year long, uh, trying to scramble and come up with subjects to talk about. And this last weekend, uh, we finally got some action. We, we got some got moving and um, the, the Utah hunt started. I won't take long. I'll kind of let Joe take it off here pretty soon, but uh, yeah, it was a fun, it was a fun weekend. I got to go over there to, to Utah and uh, hunt with Joe and it was a good time. And with that said, Joe, I'll just kind of let you start <laughs> taking off with it and uh, let you start telling the stories and I'll add in whenever I can. Sounds good. So the story starts at the very beginning, because at the very beginnings is a good place to start. Um, but uh, so, yeah, so as I got off work early and was able to get up to, to camp, get camp kind of set up. And then I was able to go out scouting on Friday. Uh, so opening was Saturday, the uh, 20th, 1st, 20th, 21st, uh, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was the 21st. So uh, I went up, I beat Eric up there. I got camp picked out and tent set up. And then I took off and went scouting. And my plan for scouting was just to find a, uh, you know, a good high vantage point somewhere where I can cover a lot of area and just sit there for, for, I think I had two hours or so of scouting more or less. And, uh, so I found, I got us, got onto a spot, got glass in, and uh, nothing was moving. Um, and then, uh, then about eight o'clock, uh, I had one bull, one bull come out in the opening in this little opening, and uh, so I put, got my, I had my phone scope and everything set up on my spotting scope, and was trying to find it, and <laughs> uh, my, my uh, mechanism on my tripod was a little dirty or something because it wouldn't wouldn't quite uh function smoothly and so it was and you know then there it was on the move so i was following it from one little opening to another and finally it just disappeared and my my uh, scope just kind of fell and re like you know re as i let go of the handle it relaxed and then there was another uh, elk in the in my field of view so there was two it was a bull uh so i sat and, and filmed them for for or the one that i could for as long as possible and uh it was a pretty good bull um i don't think eric or i would have uh passed him had we had a tag for a bull <laughs> for an any bull tag <laughs> uh being that this is a spike and cow unit only for me i can only get one of those two and which is kind of nice because when you see a bull it gives you the opportunity to sit back and relax and watch it <laughs> and uh so these two bulls they you know wandered out of view by going into the forest and uh i stayed put and then a little while later in the same bull further down the ridge these two other bulls popped out which i think they were the same ones because they're heading in this direction that these or these they end, these ones are in the direction that or <laughs> walked out into the field like in the same direction as the other two's left in so i think i saw the same two watch them for a little bit and then you know kind of kept blasting the ridge trying to see if i can see some cows trying to see you know find something else and then just that just that dark or at when it's not very good filming light i've spotted another bull and i think this one's even bigger but i can't confirm it because it was too dark and i'm just going off of like the haze the antlers kind of put off at, at night these antlers was a lot wider than the two that i saw and a little they looked a little taller and i'm and of course i'm probably you know, telling a big fish story right now, but, uh, <laughs> but that was, uh, uh, what do you call that opening Eve? And, uh, so I decided that we're going to go back into that, that Canyon 
to, uh, to for opening. I uh, figured, you know, maybe they'd still be in there or not them, but maybe some cows or something would move in. And that got us excited, though. After a couple of years of hunting, <laughs> scouting, and especially on the season or even the day before season to, to see elk. I don't think we've had that. Um, not not in the last few years. We haven't been able to scout something up and kind of at least have an idea of where to go the next day. So that was definitely different. Yeah, it was fun. Exciting. Very exciting. And uh, so then I'll go ahead and, I guess, go on over into uh, opener opening uh hey uh but uh kind of kind of explain the conditions that morning because i yeah. mean i feel like that's a little bit worthy so, of the story too so uh you know we go to bed and it you know you kind of see your breath in the morning it was um friday night and in the morning saturday it was actually warmer than it was uh <laughs> saturday morning was warmer than friday night but that has nothing to, well maybe it does because of the weather but as we we get up we're kind of you know doing the whole getting up getting packs ready deciding if we want breakfast or not and as we do so it kind of starts sprinkling and we're like oh it's not too bad you know and then all of a sudden it just more or less dumps on us and we're like yeah we you know we we don't want to go out just yet and i was a little worried been and then you know been warned too from other people hunting in the area that uh this particular area the roads going into it the main roads are graveled but any off off shoots or off sprouts side roads they're just whatever dirt mother nature put there so there's no i think sometimes they go in and maybe do some road work to fill in some of the bigger potholes at, at times but you know as far as road work goes on these side roads there is none and it's just dirt. So uh, we're sitting there and trying to decide what to do. And I was like, ah, you know, looking at, luckily we're kind of in a service area so we can see the weather. So I'm looking at the weather and it's like, oh, it's only supposed to take last an hour. So I was like, well, it's all kind of downhill. Let's hop in the truck and we'll go as far as we can and park the truck. And then, uh, it's supposed to be sunny the rest of the day, so it should dry out. And as, as we're driving in, truck did a couple sideward motions heading downhill. And uh, <laughs> I think there's a couple instances where we thought maybe we might get off the road. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. was it was it was sketchy a few times, especially being the the passenger. And uh, all I can see is is uh, you know I'm just looking down. And I'm like, it's not going to be fun for me if we slide off the road because I'm going to be the first one first to hit the trees. So I was I was kind of a little nervous, but but Joe uh, handled it like a champ and uh, drove right through it. So, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, it was kind of a slow go down there, you know, uh, while it was raining real hard. But it was uh, it was it was really slick and and uh, and it was. It was uh, kind of sketchy at times, but like I said, Joe Joe kind of had a handle, uh, more control of it than I was giving him credit for. But I was like, "Oh, Joe, Joe, slow down!" Which he was already going slow, though he was already creeping in four low. So I don't know if he could go much slower. But <laughs> but I just seen those trees and and the the edge kind of getting closer to me my side a few times. So I was like, "Ah, oh, this is a little nerve wracking. This is how I wanted the opener to go." <laughs> yeah so we, but but i did stop before we did get all the way to where we wanted because there was one sharp turn on a downhill that i i was a little worried about that we'd get sliding and wouldn't be able to stop and end up um someplace we didn't want to so but we said we got to we got to that spot and it was still raining so we sat in the truck and it makes it sounds like we're a little little bit made of salt that we were a little worried about getting melted but we just didn't want I didn't know how long it was going to be and I didn't really want to get too wet so we waited till it kind of uh, sprinkled out and then we went for a hike and got went to another on the same ridge that I was glassing the night before and uh, got 
we're sitting on this little knob looking down into the bowl trying to come up with the game plan and as we're uh doing that we look i, I look over to the left and I'm like, elk <laughs> eric's like, where it's like over there <laughs> and uh, this one elk starts coming up out of this little drainage and um so i throw up the glasses and start looking at it and i was like at first like oh it's a spike we can go get this one and i looked at it a little closer and it, it was forked you know on both sides it both sides had more than one point so i couldn't go after it and as we're watching it another one comes up behind it <laughs> and i was getting a little bit excited hoping that you know, like a whole herd was coming up out of there but it ended up just being that those two and uh they didn't seem like they're too alarmed with us there or they didn't know we were there i don't i wouldn't say um they just kind of you can tell they were on alert, but they just moseyed up and over and didn't. And then we we tried following them. They're not following, them, but we went over to the ridge that they went over into. And then it was just too thick to see anything. But uh, so we kind of hung out in that area, hoping that, you know, we'd see something else. Never did. And uh, started work making our way down the ridge. Stopped to have a little mid-morning snack. And uh, Eric got way excited again as we're eating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want me to tell that real quick? Or? Sure. <laughs> yeah, so me and Joe are sitting there and, and uh, yeah, we're having our mid-morning snack. And, and well, you know, one of my takeaways is, is we're just, we're, we're both just like kind of cutting, you know, making jokes and kind of, kind of just like one of those, those mornings where it's like, it's so much fun. Like I just, you know, was having so much fun. We we're like joking and both of us just cracking up and everything. But um, in the middle of doing all that, I look over and I just see a couple of brown anim animals popping out and, and, uh, and I get all excited. I'm like, Joe, 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 Joe. And, I think uh, I still have bruise marks on my shoulder from just squeezing it. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I just kind of reacted though. I did. I mean, I didn't really know what I saw. I just saw movement pretty much. And I knew it was an animal, but, but, uh, after a few seconds of kind of realizing what it was, it was just some cows that popped out, but, but man, I got so excited there for a split second, you know, and thought it was a couple bulls jumping out or, or elk in general jumping out and, and, uh, turns out it was just moo cows, but but yeah, that was kind of a fun, fun, fun part of the hunt, I guess you could say. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> after we come down off of that high for a minute of being excited, uh, we finish, we, we pick up and start heading further down and, and then we dive off a little further and we're, you know, we're not seeing anything, not seeing a bunch of fresh sign, but still, we still see some sign which is kind of the story of this whole hunt. But uh, anyways, we get down to a spot and we're like, oh, that's, you know, kind of had a, a good field of view to look look at. And there's a tree that we felt we can set behind. We're going to just sit down and do some cow calls just to see if something answered back. And uh, with this tree, it was kind of interesting too, because this tree we set in had some limbs cut off and we couldn't quite understand why there were limbs cut off because it wasn't like, the tree wasn't big enough for a tree stand. They're, they're cut off in a way that wouldn't really help you if you even had a trail camera on it. It was just maybe we figured it might be for a guy to shoot his bow or something, or maybe even his rifle. I don't know. It was just weird. Creating his own shooting lanes or something. But yeah, but like Joe said, it was it was kind of weird. There was no rhyme or reason why these branches were and they were cut off with with like a saw. I mean, it was like yeah. uh it was a deliberate cut. It was kind of, but it was weird. Yeah. We couldn't figure out why. I mean, it's not a big deal part of the story, but it was, it was kind of off like out here in the middle of nowhere on this kind of a steep side of the Canyon. And there's this tree out of all the other ones with the limbs cut off. Just didn't really make sense. But anyway, go ahead, Joe. Yeah. So we sat down and, you know, we we're going to kind of separate it ourselves and, and we we're both going to call. I told Eric, I was like, oh, hey, I'll start calling, but I'm going to sit down, be, let it be quiet for a few minutes. And, and uh, then I'll, I'll pick up the call and start calling. 
and then, uh, <laughs> and then I just, so I sat down, calmed down for a second, get ready to start calling. And then I catch movement like down into my, to my right. I got all excited. I was like, Oh man, <laughs> we chose good <laughs> for what, whatever reasons the hunting gods are with us like you know like bushes are kind of moving and I hear some thumping and I'm just all right <laughs> you know here it comes whatever it is it's coming and up pop two hunters <laughs> yep <laughs> <laughs> oh man just that's it was crazy of all the places you know two hunters they're kind of a ways in there stop you know we talked to them Eric got their attention point them at to where i was at too and oh yeah yeah well speaking of that i got i guess since you reminded me i gotta tell it so so um so whenever i sat down because like joe said we we were kind of spread apart a little bit basically uh the idea was is is i was going to try to get a little bit different feel the feel the view so if um so maybe i saw something and i could alert joe and then if i alerted you know, Joe would know that something was coming. And uh, that was kind of the idea anyway. So I'm sitting there and, and I had the same exact thought as Joe is I sat down and I go, and I start here. I, I, I didn't see nothing at first. I just started hearing movement and I'm like, Oh no, I can't believe this is happening. Like it's crunch time. Uh, you know, there's, there's a cow or a bull or something, you know, I mean, I'm just hoping for the best obviously, but uh, being optimistic, but I'm like getting so excited. I'm like, I can't believe this. Like Joe said, I was like the hunting God, the hunting gods are, are on our side today. And then, uh, about that time, like Joe said, these two hunters pop up. And, uh, so I, I, they didn't even see me at first. I started actually waving at them, trying to get their attention just so they knew I, uh, knew I was there. And, uh, so I tried to, I tried to alert them and, and tell them that I had joe with me down just over to my left and and so i like waved at him and i was like hey uh 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 you know i trying to give him hand signals like i got another hunter well the way he interpreted it is that i was uh uh looking at an elk or something so he kind of did this like little flutter like jump like oh you know got all excited himself and, and i'm like no no i'm trying to say that i got another hunter with me but anyway so i i just thought that was kind of funny though the way re but i kind of get it now now looking back at the way i was trying to signal to him i probably would have done the same thing thought there was a maybe i would i was i had a stock on something or something like that but i like i said i just thought it was funny <laughs> yeah so anyways so we had that we talked to them for a minute they you know i said they saw a lot of sign down through where they went through but there was they didn't come across any elk so they busted it on up and then you know we probably should have went the opposite direction that we did because we started kind of going there in like the direction that they came from we were going in that direction we probably should have turned around and went the other way just because they didn't go that way you know but it kind of probably turned out for the better in a way because we you know so we started hunting and then we kind of got looking up at the sky and the clouds were getting dark and kind of you know like maybe kind of starting to bunch up but you know i looked at eric and i was like uh, we might want to just head back to the truck because if it starts raining again we're not getting to camp tonight we're sleeping in the truck when camp really wasn't that far we could have hoofed at the camp but more you know but anyways it, you know was trying to get, keep ourselves from being in a situation that we didn't want to be in so we kind of more or less hightailed it back to the truck but uh so that was our morning hunt we get back to the truck went back to camp had had a few snacks and uh rested for a few minutes we're trying to decide where where to go for our evening and you know we had a canyon out our front door from camp so we more or less said let's go go down that way and see what what we can find so we crossed the road and started going down and looking at onyx and we're like oh there's a little finger ridge over here that we can head over and go down and then do that we're like oh sounds good so we get down this little finger ridge and set up behind this bush and, you know, just having a good time kind of, you know, 
looking across surveying every we had a good view of like down the canyon even further straight across from us on the other side of the canyon and then kind of to our left and to our right and we're sitting on a finger ridge that had an open uh filled more or less in front of us so we start picking out i think i picked out a doe on on the canyon away from us and there it goes joe two deer he's like i think they're bucks okay we're at so we you know talk to each other clue into where these bucks are and i pull out the old phone phone scope and uh put you know get it on the old spot and scope and start looking at it it's like eric these are some awesome bucks <laughs> they're probably <laughs> the best bucks that i've ever seen in my life like i've I, well i should say free range deer like i've seen some big bucks you know but i think these are is something that well i guess i'll give eric the credit he found them, <laughs> but <laughs> being in this situation, this is probably the big, these are probably the biggest bucks I've ever seen in real, in a hunting situation that I couldn't hunt. <laughs> <laughs> that so, that kind of seems a little bit, well, there's more to the story coming, but so far uh, that kind of reeling it back a little bit to the earlier hunt. When we saw those two bulls, that was, that was kind of the, the perception that we had uh, is like of course where where we can only uh hunt cows and spikes we see two you know decent <laughs> bulls and i'm like man it's just it's just the way it goes isn't it like yeah you know anyway um but yeah seeing those bucks though i'll tell you uh well a couple things first thing is 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 i was kind of glad that i spotted those out with because <laughs> i was like because uh, uh I feel like Joe's always like, Oh, there's, there's some, there's some deer there. There's some deer here, whatever, you know? And I'm like, man, how did he see those? You know, am I that blind? And I finally found those two bucks. And, and uh, so I felt pretty good about myself for kind of glassing those up. Um, but then the, uh, the, uh, Oh shoot. What was, what was the second thing? Well, I can't remember the second thing, I guess. So go, go ahead. So we're, we're having a grand old time watching these bucks and I, you know, I'm recording, I'm taking pictures and, and, uh, you know, it, it starts raining on us and we're like, oh shoot, this, the, you know, we look up and there's no clouds above us and there's, and it's raining. Like go figure. <laughs> that is a true story too. It was really <laughs> weird. <laughs> like it was raining. It wasn't like, you know, just spitting at us, but it, it was some good hard drops coming on us and there was no clouds above us. <laughs> So we sat through that and, it, you know, it, it rains a couple times after that, sat through that. And then it just starts hailing and it's some pretty good size hails coming down. And, and then we're looking at each other like, is this going to last long? Because we, we, we like, you know, we man up, we're sitting in it for about five minutes and we're like, this keeps up. It's not going to be good. So Eric's like, we might want to head up to the trees. All right, so we head up to the trees, get kind of set up in the trees under a good tree, and then you have, you know, you know how it goes. Flat two minutes later, after you get set up there, it stops, and so we're like, well, we're up here. We might as well just stay here. <laughs> and uh, I get back on those deer. I'm getting my phone scope setting back up and getting ready to hit a picture, and then my phone's my battery dies on my on my phone that I was using. And then right at that time, like, no joke, the battery dies and Eric is like staring, staring at the, <laughs> at the phone and I'm staring at it too. And out of the corner of my eyes, I catch movement down in the bottom of this little, little meadow we're watching. And I look over and I'm like, Eric elk. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he looks over like, Oh, <laughs> both of us get all excited. And it was a cow and a calf. Now, you know, we've talked a lot about ethics and stuff on, on our podcast and, and, uh, and, you know, trying to do the right thing. And, you know, you kind of feel bad taking a mom, you know, from its calf or a cat, you know, leaving a calf all by itself. And Eric's like, you gonna take it. And I was like, well, no, it's a calf and a cow. I, you know, I don't want to do that. And, and Eric's like, okay. So he's kind of watching it. And then they they run. And then the way the hill crests, they go out of sight. So you don't know if they kept running up the meadow or stopped or what. 
and then like in the back of my head i was like well it's the first thing you can hunt might as well go after it like you don't have to make that decision now It'll at least get close to it and see you know give yourself the opportunity don't count yourself out just yet and I look over at eric and i had my bow in my hands i was throwing my backpack on i was like we're going after it <laughs> <laughs> and so you now i step out from the trees still can't see the elk check the wind the wind's blowing in our face and so there right, we're good so then i start to crest over the over the hill and i just as i do so i can see that the the two are feeding and i can't the, the cow had its head down and the calf was behind it and i don't know if the cow the calf was looking up or down you know which direction but it was behind the mom so i just i dropped down uh a low, we had scrub oak but the scrub oak wasn't i think it was scrub oak it was some bushy bush thing i yeah, think so. everybody knows whenever you say scrub oak it was basically a pain in the ass yeah to say yeah, the but, least <laughs> but it wasn't very tall but it was tall enough to kind of hide me so i drop and uh start doing this little butt crawl thing and uh make try and make my way to a bush and just as i make my way to a bush I just start to pop the creep up to, you know, break that plane of where I can see. And, uh, the cow and the calf are already running. And it's like, well, gave it a shot. You know, I don't know that I really was going to shoot it, but gave it a shot. And so we get up and, you know, Eric is like, is that me that made him take off running? And I was like, I don't think so. I, Cause I, I messed up and didn't tell Eric. I saw him. I just, hit the deck and kept moving forward <laughs> and uh, yeah when you're when you're kind of done i'll kind of explain my perspective on that moment too but go ahead and finish but anyways and so but as they ran off i jumped up checked the air and the air was or the, the air the wind was blowing right to them so i think they just winded us i don't necessarily think they saw us they, they maybe heard me as i was scooting but I I don't know because I didn't see I didn't see when they took off running I just saw when they were running and I didn't see them run so my only thing is being that the wind was blowing that direction that they sniffed us yeah uh yeah I'm I'm, I'm kind of thinking that more so than than before too but um or before but kind of to reel it back so whenever whenever joe saw the the cow and calf like i'm just going to kind of explain my perspective uh and we actually got some of this on video i don't know what we'll do with it i think we should try to maybe put the moment on something i don't know what how yeah. exactly i don't know how exactly we can even explain the moment because i don't even know if i filmed that the cow and calf at all right. but yeah um but uh Anyway, so, so like Joe said, like, uh, you know, the phone dies and I'm kind of looking at the phone and Joe's looking at the phone, catches the, 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 the cow come out, the cow and calf. Now, when Joe said something, I never saw the calf and Joe's like, Joe's like, ah, I can't do that. And I was like, you can't do that. Why? And he's like, well, the, you know, the, it's cow and calf. And I was like, oh, I was like, ah, man, you know, uh, kind of like bummed out because I'm like, ah, who cares? You know, because I didn't see the calf. And uh, then Joe's like, you know what? Maybe I can. And so he takes off. Now I grab my phone and I just start recording. And Joe takes off and, and starts, uh, you know, going on this stock. Now, whenever he dropped he dropped down to his butt and started sliding all crazy. And I'm like, Oh, I don't know what's going on. I just dropped to my knees and I didn't drop quite as low as Joe, but I never saw the, I never saw the cow or calf like Joe did. And I just dropped to my knees. And, um, I was so worried because the way they came out of the, out of the, the woods there, it kind of looked like they were on a mission. Like I didn't realize that they stopped and fed. Yeah. They were so, moving pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I was like, so I didn't know why you dropped to your butt. So I kept looking up behind me because I was like, I, I was filming you, but I kept looking up behind me because I was thinking in my head that maybe they were up, up behind us. And if they were, I was going to try to alert you and say, Hey, they're up here. But, uh, but like you said, you saw them. And, 
And now looking back, I think in the future, if that ever happens again, I'll know that if you're dropping to your butt, it's for a reason. It's not just because you like to slide on your butt. <laughs> so, so, but um, anyway, so, so the next thing I, I'm looking up behind me and then um, about that time, I think I saw the cow and calf starting to run off. And, uh, and so I was like, oh man, did they see me? But like Joe, Joe explained, and he's like, I don't think they did. If you got, if you dropped down to your knees, at least, then I don't think they did see you. I think they just smelt us because uh, it's right after that, the cow and calf took off. Joe grabbed his, uh, his uh, air checker stuff. I don't know what you call it and uh, checked the wind and it, and it was literally just swirling. So, so I think that they just sniffed us, but, but from my perspective, that's what I saw was, was uh, when Joe slid down and I just dropped down to my knee because I didn't quite know what was going on and um, dropped down to my knees and, and uh, was just filming him. And I kept looking up behind me just to make sure that those, the, the cow didn't uh, come up behind us. But anyways, so like I said, Joe was like, Oh, I can't do that. You know? And I, and I'm sitting there like, why, why can't you get, you know, here's an opportunity. Let's just get this thing. And whenever I saw that cow and calf taking off and I saw that little calf running beside mama, um, I'm like, I'm so glad that we can't, I'm like, yeah, we can't do this. I'm so glad that, that they actually, uh, smelt us, you know, but that was my first time really getting, uh, uh, sniffed out like that. I know that's not the right term, but, um, winded. Yeah. I know, I know that, um, that was like my first time really, I guess that's, kind of being that close with archery too. I mean, I, that's part of it, but, but that was like, yeah, playing that wind is important, man. I like, I mean, that's, if there's a takeaway to that experience was, was playing the wind. Now there was nothing we could really do because that wind was kind of crazy up on that. I mean, up, up on that entire mountain. Cause there was times Friday, whenever I showed up and I was waiting on Joe, he was out scouting already and I'm waiting for Joe. I'm setting up camp. And I'm thinking, man, this wind is like, there is no wind. It was nice and calm. And I'm like, this is going to be, this probably be a hot weekend. And, uh, and it was everything but a hot weekend. But um, with that said though, I mean, that, that mountain does some crazy stuff with the wind and it was, it swirled pretty bad. And like, whenever, whenever we first started on that stock, like Joe said, I mean, that wind, that wind was actually in our favor. And then we just, we got down, behind that scrub oak and and it just started swirling and i i'm pretty certain that that we got winded uh, or that's the cause of those the the cow and calf taking off but at the end of the day i'm kind of glad that we didn't uh get successful in a way i mean it's hard because you know you only get so many opportunities and and uh and those opportunities come far and few in between and and uh stuff but but yeah, I mean, you know, just because of the calf, and that calf was a little smaller than, than, um, than what I thought in my head, right? Like, like I had no emotional tie whenever he was like, "Well, he has, the cow has a calf with it," and I'm like, I'm like, oh man, you know, that kind of sucks. Like, ah, oh, I would, I'd probably still go after it either. But then after seeing that little little calf run away with his mama, I was like, yeah, I'm kind of glad that we didn't do it yeah so, but anyways yeah that was kind of my perspective on that on that scene like from, from my point of view that i could see so yeah and like if you the other thing too is i where you were behind me i i didn't like you know i was i kept surveying everything in front of me and i didn't see them until i i can i could barely just started to see them when i dropped so with that being said with you being behind me and you weren't at my level and then you dropped to a knee anyways like you know you weren't I don't think you were seen because I didn't see them till I was standing where I was at if that yeah, makes that, sense yeah that does make sense and and like I said I didn't know what was I was kind of confused I just I just know whenever you hit your hit your butt um I just dropped to a knee and um and, but I, I was, I was kind of confused. I didn't quite know what was going on. So, so yeah, I'm pretty sure I didn't get seen either, but um, yeah, it's hard to say. 
Yeah, but the other interesting thing too is uh, from the 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 pre opener, so my Friday night scouting trip, and then this Saturday night, the it was kind of interesting because both times the elk came out about eight o'clock, like that's when they seem that's when they seem to be moving, which I thought was kind of interesting. Yep. But uh. But so, yeah, that was, you know, first few days, first day, that was a lot of action, more action than we've had in, in years on the first day. <laughs> two elk, two, two nice bucks, and a, at least almost an opportunity, at least tried for an opportunity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was fun, man. I mean, I, I thought for sure, I was like, oh, man, we're going to be walking out of here with some meat, but um, it didn't quite happen and probably got a little too, ex- too excited. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what we could have done though. I don't know what we could have done different. I mean, I just think that the wind was kind of a factor in that. And Oh yeah. Like there's nothing. The only thing we could have done different is, uh, made the wind stop, but we can't control that. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But man, it was so, it was so exciting though. Like just all the activity, all for as much activity as we had, I mean, like it, it kind of just, it kept our spirits up, you know, a lot of the time, the last few hunts that years that I've been on a hunt or well, last year, even with you in, in, uh, on that other side of, of Utah, I mean, I guess the most action we got was that, that doe that popped up at the end of the day, but, um, yeah. but it, it was, it was, it kept the hunt exciting because I mean, we're just plugging along and, you know, next thing you know, I mean, we're glassing bucks, we're glassing uh, bulls. We're, you know, next thing we see is cows. I mean, it was just, it was just, um, you know, just things were happening in a way that it just kept us excited and kept us going where, you know, uh, I know last year, whenever, whenever uh, you were in Colorado, we didn't even, we didn't even glass a deer, you know? So it was like kind of getting frustrating because we just weren't seeing nothing at all. Uh, I mean, except that, that last day that you were with me and we saw the bear and the cow elk, that was kind of yeah. exciting, but, um, but yeah, I don't know for whatever reason, it just, just seemed like uh, this trip, just a lot of things were, a lot of things were different. I don't know if it's just been the podcast and, you know, just talking about hunting and working on hunting, like just our spirits were up a little more than I think maybe in the past. And it kind of felt like, uh, like, uh, I don't know if you got this sense, Joe, but to me, i I feel like we kind of got a sense, like we, uh, we've kind of went up a level in our hunting game a little bit or something, you know, like right. where, where things were kind of, kind of working our our way a little bit i mean we, you know obviously we didn't bring nothing home but just things were kind of working out for us and we were i felt like we were kind of putting ourselves in the right positions a lot more than maybe the past and true i i don't know it just it just felt good it was a different it was one of the most different it was kind of a different hunt than what we've had in the past but i will say that mountain that mountain is an awesome mountain i mean uh yeah, I hope, I hope one day I'm gonna get a, I'll go over there to Utah and probably hunt that mountain. You know. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. But then Sunday we hunted, and Eric took off. But we, you know, it's kind of interesting. We went. I took him to a spot that we went, or I went and scouted earlier in the year, and I did see some elk. I heard some elk, in my scouting trip, but. Uh, it was kind of interesting because there was a, a fair amount of sign, but I don't know how new the sign was. Like, it didn't seem like it was all that fresh. There was some that seemed fresh, but for, like, it seemed like it seemed like there was an abundance of sign there for a minute, but, like, nothing was ever fresh. The other interesting thing was that, like, the thistles, the little purple thistles, all the tops, all the flower parts were, like, eaten off. Of, and that, it was a pretty good like thistle patch i don't know if i don't i was gonna look that up to see if deer or elk or what really does that 
but I didn't, I'll have to do that for, uh, I'll write that down for our next uh, podcast, get some more information on what eats thistles, but it was just yeah. kind of interesting. Yeah, that, that, that was interesting. I mean, I'm assuming that it was uh, elk because I mean, I guess it could have been cows too, in some sense, but right. Like regular, regular moo cows, but um, yeah. No cow were, patties. Yeah, yeah, you're right. There wasn't really any cows over there or as far as signs of uh, moo cows yeah. anyway. But yeah, there was a lot of, and we saw some, uh, we saw a couple of does. We didn't, I don't think we saw any bucks uh, that morning, but we did see some no. does in a few, a few random spots, but, but that, that area was kind of weird. Cause like, like Joe kept saying in his head and it just seemed like such a great spot for elk to kind of hang out. We were kind of surprised that we didn't bump any. Right. Uh, and I, I think that was kind of playing in your head quite a bit because you're, you know, so like so many times you'd stop and you'd be like, where are they at? I, it seems like a great spot. And I, I think that's the hard thing with uh, with hunting these things is is uh, sometimes they're just where they're going to be. And, it you know, if they choose to be in the same area you're at, great. It, but sometimes they're not in the area that you're at. And that's the way the way the cookie crumbles, I think. But. It, yeah. it was, it was a beautiful spot. And I mean, I think like I, I kept telling Joe, I'm like, I feel like this spot is just one of those spots. Like they're here. It's just, you gotta, you gotta kind of be here when they're, when they are here, you know, like um, it's one of those spots that you guaranteed to see them. You just might not see them the first day or two, right. but you just got to keep coming back to that spot. Cause eventually they'll be back. I think, but it was it was a beautiful spot. It was awesome mountain, man. I'm, I, I'm, ah, yeah. It's an exciting mountain. It was, it was a really cool spot to hunt, and I had a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I feel like this whole trip to, or that. I mean, it, it only lasted uh, what two days. I mean, well, if you count Friday, like two days total or whatever, but um, day and a half, however you want to count that up. But it, it was a quick trip for myself, but. But uh, it was it was probably one of the funner hunts that we've been on. I mean, I, I always think that they're fun, but I don't know. I, I don't know if it was just like one of those things where we just didn't take ourselves too serious. We kind of had a little bit of action, so we felt a little bit of success already. Um, we're just having so much fun, man. I just that that was my big takeaway. I'm like, man, I just I don't remember like having so much fun and and hunting at the same time, like most of the time we're a little more serious, I guess, or maybe frustrated that we're not seeing nothing. And because we've actually saw stuff, we kind of felt half successful. So we just kind of like, like that part of our guard was down or something. So we were kind of like having fun and. Yeah. Yeah. But the other thing too, is that on our hike back, we came across, uh, <laughs> we didn't realize it, but we, there, there's this mound with like this post in the center of it, a mound of rocks and it wasn't like a big mound but you know you can tell it was put there and uh they had a little uh they had like a post that's been cut off and we get looking at it like this is kind of weird you know like this pile of rocks with this post in it and and then we're like what do you think this is and we kind of you know just chalked it up to uh someone could be a burial site you know or or what but you know we were just like whatever <laughs> And we kind of stepped to go walk away, and Eric goes, "Hold on a second. And he takes a step back and he looks around, and he goes, "Hey, uh, there's a circle of rocks around this pile of rocks." <laughs> and I was like, "What?" <laughs> it's like, I would have noticed that. And then you get looking, and then like, yeah, every so often there was a rock in a circle all the way around this pile of rocks. So we don't I, you know, I don't know, it could be a handful of things. I don't know. What it, what it was but oddly enough there was a skeleton inside the circle <laughs> an animal but, skeleton right right <laughs> to, to, to be to be clear <laughs> um no it, it was it was weird though you know i was kind of making jokes and i was like ah it's probably like a say and rich i could have been i have no no idea and it's hard to say how long it's been there i mean it seems like it's been there a long time yeah i'd and say a while I, I i i walked up to 
I walked up to the where the pile of rocks was. This is kind of before we kind of were looking and seeing the circle of rocks. Um, and and all the in the circle, I mean, these were like it wasn't like uh, little pebbles. They were like decent sized rocks, like, but and they were strategically Almost placed like around the pile. Rock slabs too. Like it wasn't a round rock. They were flat, flat. Yeah, like square rocks. Yeah, yeah. They they were intentionally placed though, obviously and. Yeah, I walk up to the pile though before I noticed the circle of rocks and like moved it. And and as soon as Joe said, "Oh, it might be a burial thing or something," and I was like, "Oh yeah," <laughs> I kind of <laughs> felt weird about moving the rock, and I was like, "Um, hopefully I'm not cursed and have a hundred years uh, curse or some after moving that rock." But anyway, yeah, it was it was weird though. We kind of took some pictures. It's hard to. It's hard to explain it, but man, it was interesting that it was, I, and who knows, it could have been just somebody just bored and making the thing, but, but, uh, it was definitely kind of a weird sight to walk, walk through, but it wasn't really that far away from the road. So I'm sure lots of people have seen it over the years. Right. But, but yeah. uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was interesting. Yeah. That man, that area though, I keep kind of going thinking about that that area was so nice even even before we went i i called it my i nicknamed it the circle of death but um before we walked up to the circle of death uh just the open area and how that was kind of laid out i was like man this is, i could see where some animals might cross through here just seemed like a lot of good area in, you know to hunt yeah. on that mountain but we did but that was the area that we saw the least that's what i kind of going back to that that seeing that cow when we sat down we're like i don't know if this is the best spot you know and uh we just decided to sit there but but it was kind of our our field of view wasn't the greatest and you know it wasn't like the the prettiest spot in the world or whatever i mean i don't know if that's a good term for it but but we sat down and and then that cow comes running cow and calf come running out and I just thought that was kind of funny. Like the area that we're like, Oh man, it just seems like there's be so many elk around here. We didn't really see nothing, but the, the spot the day before where it was kind of a little unassuming spot to sit down or probably not the most, the best spot to sit down and get an elk or whatever it, um, we, we saw elk and, and those bucks, I mean, they were, yeah. they were about a thousand or so yards away, probably a lot more than a thousand yards, but, but, um, Oh yeah. And that's another thing too, to go back to those bucks though. So they, they were huge. They were huge bucks. Uh, Joe, like he said earlier, got out his spotting scope and put his phone up to it. And, and we got some footage of it. And the craziest thing is, is, is especially the one, the, the, the one kind of like ducked in the brush enough where we lost it, but the other one just stood there forever. And I, I guess there's a little more story around that, uh, we started hearing coyotes and you could vaguely hear them. I never did was able to glass them up and you could vaguely mm -hmm. hear them, but it seemed like that buck just like froze still when, uh, when the coyotes started and just did not move for, I mean, uh, that one recording, what, what was it like 30 minutes or something? Yeah. I mean, it, and he's, he stood, he went like motionless at like minute 10. So it's almost like 20 minutes of him. I think he, repositioned once at like 15 minutes but it's just mostly him just being still yeah yeah it was interesting to watch that just kind of being able to it, it it was kind of a cool perspective as far as just watching watching their behaviors without there was no influence guess, from us <laughs> yeah, no influence from us. Just watching their behavior as what it was in a natural state, and and seeing seeing how they react to things, and it was real interesting to to watch how they acted to even coyotes. I didn't think they were too scared, of, but I guess coyotes could get them too, or would yeah. could go after yeah. them if it, they wanted to. But but yeah, I mean they uh, yeah that buck just stood still forever, and then we didn't see that other one pop out for the longest time until about the end before the the yeah. uh, battery on the phone died right which kind of sucked because 
because we're I mean, that was kind of like at that point, it was getting later. Like Joe said, it uh, it was about eight o'clock and we weren't seeing nothing. We almost gave up on the elk hunting, you know, because we we're like, ah, it's getting late. Haven't seen nothing yet. So we were just kind of being entertained watching those those bucks and and then uh, kind of just seeing how they how they react and what their behavior was like to the to the coyotes howling and stuff. And then the phone died and then. Yeah, I don't know. Just then the cow the cow came out, but all kinds of fun. Yeah. You know, you happen to just look over and see that cow. It just makes me wonder like how many times we we miss something. I feel like almost every time every time uh earlier that day whenever you saw those two bulls uh I was I was like I was talking to you and we were kind of trying to develop a plan. I was talking to you and then you were kind of looking back at me and every time you like caught it out of the corner of your eye though, it was just, I was just kind of interesting how it, how it worked out. I, I don't know. I don't know where that was going, but it just was interesting how it worked out, but, ah, oh, man, so much fun, so much activity. Yeah. Luckily we made, we made it out of that one spot where right. uh you know the 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 rain didn't quite start coming to actually it started getting nicer there for a second it did but we, we were just that was the thing is i mean if if it would have uh i guess this is the first morning hunt that we did because we were planning on staying on that mountain till till night but because of the weather and the fact that if it started raining on that hillside that we might get stuck down there we're like ah maybe we should get out of here and reassess and come up with another plan and uh so that's what we did but uh but yeah luckily we didn't get stuck down there and the the weather kind of went in our favor there for a while yeah but if we would have been down there you know whenever we got that hell and all that stuff on that other ridge i mean and i gotta hand it to you too i'm kind of just filling in the gaps on some of this so joe's being nice enough to not bring it up i thought he'd probably give me a little bit of crap but we started getting hell. And so I go grab my, I grab my raincoat and I'm, you know, and, and actually I, I had another raincoat and I was like, Hey, I, well, Joe had one too. And, but uh, I was like, I was like, Joe, you want this raincoat? And he's like, Nope, I got it. And I mean, it's just, he's it, taking it all just with his regular stuff on. And, and I'm like, I'm all getting bundled up and everything, you know, and going through the storm and this guy's just toughing it out like a, like a true mountain man. And, uh, I'm like, man, I, I, but I'll tell you though, like one of my, one of my thoughts was, is, is if I sit here and get, get soaked and everything becomes miserable, it's going to be a miserable hunt. So I'm like, I'm going to use my equipment that I've paid for to protect me to not make my, my hunt miserable. So that was my thinking. So I could have handled it, but <laughs> my thinking, you know, like I, I do a, over the years, I've kind of started doing a lot of self-checking. You know, like I, I, I try to stay aware of what of what my body's doing and how I really feel, and that goes also into uh, what the weather's doing, and what the weather potentially be doing later. And so we've kind of talked about it too, about like you know our natural body heat and running hot and running cold. And so <laughs> over the years. After, you know, like I've spent a lot of time on a, behind a spotting scope, just scouting hillsides. If I know I'm going to be sitting there for hours, I'll put my stuff on. But uh, if I, but if, if I know with, I could at any minute pick up and go, I'll probably just tough it through because if I put a jacket on and then throw my pack on and have to run after an animal real quick and I got my jacket on, like I'm going to, I'm going to be sweating buckets within no time at all. And like I'm on, and then I'm uncomfortable with the jacket on with my pack on. So it's like, so I was a little cold, but you know, I kind of figured it was going to quit and it was going to warm back up again. And I didn't want to be taking my coat on and off and kind of messing with it. So, it, you know, like, yeah, you know, like it probably was being a little bit more mountain man than I probably needed to be at times, but you know, it's not that I just try to be tough. It's I'm, I'm filling out the situation 
and trying to plan for what could happen down the road. Yeah, that makes sense. I took a selfie and it looked ridiculous because Joe would look like he was he was summer bathing and I'm I'm all bundled <laughs> up in my coat and <laughs> I'm like, well, this looks silly, but <laughs> I don't know. And you probably have a point, but I didn't see the weather uh, deciding to turn into 100 degree weather anytime soon. So I wasn't really too worried about that. The way that wind was blowing and the the rain, I mean, the rain would stop. I mean, the first time or the rain started whenever we didn't have a cloud above us uh, and I threw my coat on. Uh, and actually stopped there for a second. I'm like, well, you know, I, I think I made a comment and I said something in the lines of, well, you know, I'm, I'm glad I, I put on my coat. So get that rain to stop for a while, you know, and, and, uh, and it did, but then it kicked back up. And then I was kind of glad that I, whenever that, whenever it started hailing, I was kind of glad that I, uh, put it all on, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I just, I just didn't want to get like, cause I was like, well, I want to try to stay as dry as possible because hiking out of here and being all soaked and wet and miserable just doesn't sound like much fun to me. And it, and it, it wasn't, it ended up not being as dramatic as I was making it in my head, but that was my thought process was, was I just didn't want to get soaked and become miserable and become extra cold because my clothes were soaked. So that's why I threw on all my stuff. But like I said, Joe's a true mountain man. I think he runs a little hotter than most because even, even the next day, the wind, the wind wasn't too bad, but, and the weather was actually a lot better, but the wind was kind of kicking up and that morning wind just, I don't know, for me, it just, I kind of like having that, that coat on to break that wind. Cause that sometimes that wind, just that constant, just kind of starts eating at you after yeah, a while. Does. And, it does. But eventually I got hot and took it all off and <laughs> had to stop and, Hey Joe, I need to take off my coat. <laughs> but oh, uh, so yeah. So back to the story. Eric takes packs up and leaves me on the mountain by myself on Sunday, and I kind of went back over to this roughly the same area that we saw the elk. But I just kind of went the next finger ridge over and found a spot and set up and, and waited and listened and was patient and. I thought I could hear a very faint elk bugle. And uh, and then I, I swear I could hear uh, like, you know, like doe bleats. Is it bleats? Is that how you that a deer? Like, is that how you, like a doe call, I guess? Like they're little. Oh, okay. I, I could hear something like that in two different spots. So I thought I was going to have a deer come in on me. That was kind of cool. That was, but that was my Sunday night. And then. I was taking off Monday. So I got up Monday and went across kind of where went dropped in where me and Eric saw the cow. And it was kind of interesting because uh, as I started going down, tried to play the wind, put it in my favor. I did hear another elk bugle. And that one was, again, was very, well, it wasn't too faint. I could hear it pretty good. And they had like, you know how an elk bugle will rise and then kind of like chuckle or just quit. Mm -hmm. Well, this one, like as it rose, it was almost like it was yelling at you. Like it didn't have that that steady inflection. It was more like you know, like a, a yell, like just yelling instead of a <laughs> huh. a pitch. It was kind of interesting. But and the other interesting thing too, like I kind of learned that the elk, the, the fresh sign. And the new sign was all in this, I, I'm calling it a transition zone between the quakies and the um, and the pine trees. Pines. Yeah, evergreens. That's because I, you know, I, I walked through that zone. I was coming across tracks that were made in the mud or in the in the slick, slick uh, dirt, mud terrain. And then a lot of the poop and stuff was was green colored and still looked wet. And, uh, and it's not black and dry. So I was like, I have to be somewhere close to them or not close to them, but this has to be their area. And then I dropped down even further past that, like to the bottom of the canyon. And I would come across the track here and there, but not, 
near as much as up in that higher transition area. So I did a big loop Monday. It took me, I, I, you know, I left at sun up and it took me till I think it was two o'clock or so to get back to camp, 2.30. So I just um, packed up and headed home. Oh, but I did see, I had a little, little forking horn. It was kind of fun. Uh, and I, I caught movement up in front of me, so I froze. And the, this little, little buck goes walking through the forest with its head down, sniffing. And so it, it goes out of view. So I, I started walking up and looking down in the area that it went. And then as I got close to where, where it was, I looked at, like I was at the bottom. So it just, there was a creek run, and then it just started going up the other side. And he was, I got some footage, but he was up. Uh, just on the, in the, there's some like uh, green bushes on the other side. He was just nibbling on. Mm. And I just, it was kind of funny because like I didn't have anything between me and him. Like I didn't have a bush or tree branch or nothing, you know, like it was direct sight. And uh, I stepped into it and noticed he was there. So I froze. But I kind of took the time to get comfortable. I set my bow down. Like I still held on to it, but set it. So that way I could, you know, with the cam on my boot and I was holding the top of it and just watching them. And I pulled my phone out and put it on camera mode and filmed them, you know, so I, I wasn't that I was being still, but like I was getting away with it, which was kind of interesting. I don't know if yeah. like he didn't know I was there, so he didn't worry about it. But yeah, I st stood there, watched them for a little bit, eating. And then to the point where like, all right, I'm ready to move on. <laughs> so I got moved tired on. of watching them. Yeah, I got tired of watching them. So I moved on and I think he maybe, I stepped on a branch and he, I think he looked at me after that, but he never ran off. I don't even know that he knew where, what I was, you know? So, and then I hiked clear up out of there. And again, didn't get into fresh sign until I got up on top transition zone again i started getting into sign and up i came out on, on another little finger ridge that was an open open field like thing with a bunch of scrub oak and there's a lot of tracks running across that like it was just just kind of interesting mm. and it was kind of nice because this ground was soft because of the rain and stuff that we've had this last week that it was easy to see the tracks so like they're in there we just like you said we weren't where they were <laughs> yeah that uh that transition zone is it kind of uh just is it kind of a bench at all like i mean no, no just the hillside just on the drop side oh huh. that's interesting yeah that well, makes sense though lots of cover and right and then then too like you know cover and feed the quakies weren't all that thick so like you know i'm sure that there was some feed in there that they liked or something, you know, so they didn't have to leave the protection of the quakies and then the big pines, I'm sure give them a place to bed up in or something. I only came across one bed, so I don't know where they're bedding, but, but the other interesting thing too, so I'm going, I'm getting down in there, getting into the pines and I'm going slow, taking my time. I heard like a pretty good, crack you know like a big crack and i was like oh there's something down there but i never saw anything and then I'm, i get down in there a little further and all of a sudden i start I, you know like I, I sound like i hear something moving through the woods it was started out away from me and it started coming closer and closer and closer and, I, and <laughs> so then i got real still and started focusing on where it was coming from and it was a dang squirrels dropping pine cones <laughs> they all started dropping at the same time oh it was they're interesting good. they're good at that <laughs> yeah like it was just you know like they just like i said it started away from me and it moved close to me and it was just i was like no way <laughs> that's funny yeah huh i've had that happen to me a few times too out there and i'm like <laughs> getting all excited oh something's like something's going down and it's just chipmunk yeah yeah so that was my my monday so packed up headed home so that was my opening weekend so it, you know 
it was a fairly good opener for us. Good, good start for our track record. You know, like from the past, they were, we're up a hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, yeah, to, to break it down. I mean, that's how I feel too. I mean, I feel like, uh, I feel like this year is going to be packed full of a lot of, a lot of good stories and activity and it's going to be an exciting, exciting hunt, uh, hunting season. And, and, uh, man, yeah, we had a blast. I know. I mean, yeah, this, this opening weekend, we had a blast. I was kind of hoping that we'd get something that way Joe can come out and hunt with me right away, but might have to save it for another weekend, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Might have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, we'll get there. Uh, what's yep. your, what's your upcoming plans? Are you going to move? Are you, are you going to go back to that area or are you going to move to an area where you can get some, uh, get, uh, where it's legal to take Any a legal bowl? bowl? Yeah. I don't I'll probably head back to this area. This area is just a little bit closer for me. So, you know, like I get there after work and st and have time to hunt where if I go that like, well, I, I probably could look at a map, find someplace closer, but I don't know of any place closer. <laughs> uh, yeah. That, it's a, it's a neat area, man. I mean, it was, it was a fun area. You know, I, a lot of every, everything's, everything's downhill and then back uphill to the truck. But, uh, other than that, it was a fun, it was a fun area. It, it seems like such a good area to hunt. So it's very exciting to, to watch or to, uh, to have that experience to hunt over there. And I, I can't wait till in the future. I think that's definitely an area that I want to hunt. I never, I never did tell you, but, uh, up the road aways from that. Yeah kind of whenever you come up over the pass i don't want to quite give the area away but uh i did a i did a job back in there for the oil field for fracking okay and uh whenever i first broke out in the oil field but i i i worked back there in that kind of on a whole nother mountain range but it was still kind of the same general side of the mountain and everything and uh man i just thought that was the most beautiful area it reminded me a lot of kind of where we grew up in idaho in certain in certain respects yeah and uh really loved it and i remember way back then i was like man i want to hunt over here sometime you know because it's just such a great area so um so yeah it was it was really cool uh seeing all that right yeah yeah so you know i think i'll be up in that area somewhere this this weekend but that would be my my plan, but uh, gosh, I, I, it's kind of funny when we hit these parts. Like we get kind of holding holding it up. I feel like good momentum, but then we get to the end and we kind of hit a wall. Like all right, yep. Yeah. I know <laughs> we, we probably need about... to get better about just just having a hard out to keep it fresh, keep it keep it exciting. Yeah. But with that said, though, you can take us out anytime you want. <laughs> all right, I'll do that. Thanks guys for, uh, for watching, listening and, uh, contributing to the struggling hunters in whichever way you're doing it, liking, commenting, following, we appreciate it. Uh, keep, keep, keep listening. We'll hopefully have some more stories for you. Uh, that's all I got for today. We'll talk to you guys in a week and hopefully if you're hunting, good luck. You got anything, Eric? Oh, <laughs> I thought that was <laughs> it. All right, guys. Well, um, yeah, thanks. Thanks, guys, for listening. Uh, episode 71. Pretty cool. We're uh, making them happen. Uh, just excited for the hunting season. Excited for to bring the content to you guys. And um, hopefully, hopefully we can keep having exciting stories and keep keep going. Uh, with that said, I'm I'm out. Bye. <laughs>